Well, good afternoon from Southeast New Hampshire. It's a stunning day here today. Somewhere in the mid 20s for temps, eh, maybe low 20s. It's beautiful, mid 70s or so. No humidity, not a cloud in the sky. Absolutely stunning. Though some of the locals might say it's a little humid, but for my Texas skin, oh, it feels great. I'm actually headed to the beach, the seacoast. See my family there, they're at the beach today. And it's gonna be a beautiful day. I've got breath in my lungs. I'm out on the bike. Let's get it. Just got a nice steady zone two ride on the cards today. It'll be about three and a half hours total, but I've got to soak it up while I can because I'm headed back to Texas for a student ministry soon. And this is the last of this weather I'll have for a while. Well, I made it over that concrete barrier over there. You'll see the sea in a second. But yeah, only about 24 miles here. Kept it pretty easy. Smell that sea air. Oh, it's awesome. So after a couple of hours with my family at the beach, headed home, and this northern part of the route takes you along the coast, but as I'll put up some shots here, the beach is not really a beach down here. There's a lot more rocks. Really beautiful part of the coast in this part of New Hampshire. So I'm on some back roads now with little to no traffic. I've got about 12 miles to get home. 
and then dinner awaits. But I want to talk for a few minutes about faith. And, you know, faith, of course, is a loaded word. Religions use the word faith. Christianity uses the word faith a lot. And oftentimes it's defined in a way contrary to the way that the Bible actually defines it. If you were to look up the word faith in any standard dictionary, you might find a definition like belief in something for which there is no proof. And that's just an unfortunate definition because when someone thinks of having faith in God or faith in Jesus, they often think you need to conjure up something for which there's no proof. You just have to go, okay, just gonna grit my teeth and believe it even though there's no evidence for it. And like I said, the Bible's definition of faith is the complete opposite. Let me explain. The Hebrew word emunah and the Greek word pistis, they both imply the idea of steadiness or reliability or firmness or steadfastness. So when it's used to describe God as firm or trustworthy or steadfast, it implies that his word, what he spoke, is reliable, that he's actually gonna do what he said. certainly is nuanced to those words in Hebrew and Greek, but I hope you can see the last thing that it means is belief in something for which there is no proof. In fact, there are so many examples in the scriptures of men and women who had faith in God, who counted him and his words as trustworthy and reliable, not because they just blindly believed, but precisely because they had seen the proof that he had been trustworthy and reliable in the past. In other words, his track record is what provoked them to go, God's gonna do everything that he said. So it's real historical evidence, things that God has demonstrated in the past to prove himself true to his word that made these men and women say, Okay, God is faithful. I'll put my faith in him. So for a disciple of Jesus, it means that to have faith in God means to count his words as reliable and trustworthy. The fact that he's done things in the past to prove himself reliable, faithful, steadfast, immovable, and he will do everything he said in the future. That's the confidence we have. And it means also the way that we grow in faith is that we search out that history. We seek to understand what God has done in the past and to get his track record clear. Got another video on my channel here called Biblical Faith, Reliance on God's Word. So if this has been encouraging and provoking, check out that video for sure. And like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if this was encouraging and I'll see you all in the next one.